that you will object when things are being done against your will, that you will say that it's without consent, and that you really approach this as a visitor here to clean up a matter, that you're not there to validate any of their bad behaviour. Now, that may sound simplistic, but let me, let me tell you, when people have spoken of the court and they've spoken of behaviour, what I've just described, as logical as it sounds, is not, I repeat, is not how many people have been encouraged to behave in the last few decades. In fact, people have been encouraged to just go in whatever clothes you feel like, not to acknowledge anything, to really um, not give any quarter. And as a, as a consequence, a lot of people have been, um, have been put in trouble. So it may sound simplistic, but it's based on the premise that you know the knowledge that's written in uh, those sections on one's hyphen heaven and that you've, you, you understand the paperwork, what it means. Yes, very good. Um, another important note here I'm seeing just for uh, folks that are just on the phone line is to remember to mark the attachments or your exhibits actually as annex instead of calling it attached. Uh, make sure that they are referred to as being annexed. Um, that was an important tidbit of information that came a few weeks ago. Uh, and it's a little note here on the chat just to remind I, folks. And I had a question here from, from Klaus, who uh, from Iowa, had just asked Terry, he said, when the animus revocandi is achieved by an individual, does the does he not in many cases get murdered by the guardians in order to protect their corruption? Um, let me can I just quickly answer that? That'd be great, sure. When a judge goes to court today, how many people do do we think that they will visit will will come to their court that are honourable, respectful, well dressed, well spoken? that know their right of non-consent, their right of v coactus in, in signing anything you know, under duress, that have put in executive letters, put in their decree of nullity, do all the things we've said, and are going to make that judge work for every inch of the case in honour. The chances are they would probably come up and face one person like that probably in the past once every six months if they're lucky, or well, not if they're unlucky. The vast majority that will trump through their court will agree, will may whinge or moan, but it'll just be like watching cattle at a market. And what happens when now, instead of one every six months, the risk is that they're going to get once a week, once a day. It won't be too long before those judges realise that either they have to get on top of the law or, or give up. There's no doubt that people have been murdered by the system. There's no doubt. And, and Klaus probably knows people who, or may or may not know people who have suffered that kind of fate. I've certainly have heard of people who've suffered that fate. But we're not dealing with, we're dealing with a different approach that takes it separate to even what people would call a sovereign or even the free man movement. We're actually approaching it as people seeking to see the law upheld and the law restored. And so it puts a slightly different um, uh, attenuation on what we're doing. Does it mean that, that people won't get uh, hurt? <clears throat> no. I mean, as we said, stupid people will do stupid things. But it cannot be taken as a given, and it shouldn't be taken as a given, that the system will respond ultimately with violence. But of course, violence is a sign of a tyrant. Look at look at Gaddafi. And so, when you finally get a tyrant to the position that they cannot claim the law anymore, yes, yes, there, there will be violence. But I hope at that point we have communities and people working together so that you know individuals are not isolated. So I don't know if that's a straight answer or not, Klaus. But I, I don't I don't expect people in these processes to be murdered in re achieving success. And I know you're not saying that everyone's getting knocked off. But um, I, I do expect to see stupid behaviour, sadly, yes. 
but I, but I think that the kind of action you're talking about will only, if it does occur more and more, based on the way we're approaching things, will only accelerate their end. But no, I don't believe there is that risk at all in the approach we're taking. No. Right. Very good. Thank you, Frank. We have uh, Lynn on the phone line. Lynn, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello, Lynn. Next exhibits and. Oh wait! Wait. Right. Go back to the beginning. Sorry, Lynn. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I was writing about the annex exhibits, and I also wrote it's. You can reference them by saying um, this, for instance, this deed poll is annexed as though stated in its entirety herein. Now you've locked it into your notice that Ron was talking about, but, you, but you've locked it on the back. If you say attached, they can remove the paper clip and take it away. If you say annexed and you say referenced herein, as though in its in hot entirety, now the whole thing is part of the notice and attached to the notice, if that makes sense to you. Fully. Excellent. Okay. All right. Yes, very Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Lynn, for that. All right. We have another caller. Uh, let me get them. Truth Matters. Truth Matters. Can you hear us? Are you there? I hear you. Hi, Terry. Oh, there Hi, you Frank. are. Hi. Well, Frank, I'm going to take us down another angle, if you don't mind. I, uh, sure. I, this is Greg from uh, North Idaho. Um, I, I've been reading through all of your One Faith of God, uh, the Supreme Bible of God, and I'm loving all of it, and I've been devouring all the history that you've given me. I uh, started and then quit seminary back in 83 to 85, and... Uh, found uh, what you said tonight about the teachings of Jesus um, years ago was screaming at people, ministers, and everybody else. I always felt like that. Here's what I said his primary teaching was breaking the bankers and enslavement of the people. But, of course, uh, the ministers liked their 10% tied in and all the money they were taking off of everybody, even within the Protestant church. So I really appreciate your, your putting this out there. But what my question tonight is about um, <laughs> Chapter 11 about your encyclical. And um, I've been reading through all of your writings, also the Final Testament. And, um, well, first of all, let me, let me back up for just one second. When you made, mentioned December 21st, 2011, which is the releasing of Michael, uh, the yeah. Archangel, um, I've been reading the Dea Magisterium, uh, Soul Code, I mean, everything I can get off your websites about the historicity of our creation and the, the beings that created us. And if I'm not yes. mistaken, um, this Michael and his uh, army are real. This is not a yes. metaphor. No. It's very real. Okay. Um, what it is... Um, okay, I'll, I'll let you into a bit of secret knowledge about <clears throat> the significance of it. We have approximately three and a half billion DNA bases in our DNA, 40, 46 uh, the chromosomes, whereas opposed to the primates of 48. The, 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 uh, the interesting thing is that the number of genes that they identified in that base was a fraction of what they expected. They thought at the start of the Genome Project they'd find 100,000, they ended up finding less than 30,000. I think it was close to 22, 23,000. So a fraction. And what they found was that the what they call junk DNA was uh, far more repetitive in its uh, in its form, and that there there is a pattern, but they don't know what that pattern is. And there seems to be, you know, a variation there. And I put to you that that when you look at the structure of a cell and microtubules being Tubulin dimers, it's a structure of cytoskeleton of a cell. The, these these tubulin dimers have a unique feature. They are either in a zero or a one position. And that when these proteins are created, I put to you that the DNA, junk DNA, is all about the order 
of zeros and ones when, when they are created. In other words, our DNA stores memory. Our DNA stores memory. So when we speak of Michael and the army coming, if I'm correct and that there is deep knowledge stored within us, there are dates of release of that knowledge. And December 21st is one of those dates. And as much as I'd like to have it now, <laughs> there is a cycle to be, to be unwound. Okay? Oh, okay. Well, I really thank you for that explanation because Ron and I have been going around about, about what that actually meant and uh, um, the significance in a practical sense as to how we could see it. I, I do know that a, a, a man that I met recently who's a DNA expert who I would like to have get in contact with you um, heard the discussion I was carrying over from your discussion about the junk DNA being actually our connection with the divine creator. And he came over and was so surprised at what he heard, he confirmed that, you know, from a scientific standpoint, what was being said. So just, um, just that's another, to me it was just another confirmation that came out of the blue, what was the likelihood of meeting somebody who had that knowledge at a, at a bookstore or a coffee shop. So um, second thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, on Chapter 11, then, of the encyclical. And if it's inappropriate, you don't have to answer the question. But no, 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 nothing's inappropriate. Okay, okay. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, no, no, number 24, uh, number 24, or number 20, yeah, 24, where you start with 22. I am but a man, but I am but one man, yet as an intelligent man, you also know that looks can be deceiving. For upon my death, it has been ordained that I shall head an army the likes that has never seen in history, and the flags of the spiritual army shall carry the standards of the highest archangels and our demons side by side as heroes. And no force in heaven or earth shall withstand the force of this mighty focused spiritual force. Okay. For the, the treaty and pledge of Lucifer of his forces and commands have already happened. The end days have come. All right. I won't read any more, but I just want to know, does that play off of what you just answered in my other question? Yeah. I, I, I'd say to you that, that, that um, part of, I've been doing this for a long time, long, longer than I cared to imagine I was doing it. And it's also a journey for me, and a journey of embracing being a man and 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 not and not um, and stepping away from the positions that people would otherwise say. So one of the positions that I've stepped away with freely, I am stepped away freely, is any position in this temporal world as being regarded as any kind of messiah or guru. But there is also the other side, which is to step away from the spiritual side as being regarded as any type of messiah, guru or, or leader. And so what you've highlighted is that in this journey, whilst I accepted early on the need to step away from the temporal, I was still battling my role on the other side. And I, and I say to you, what you read is something that needs to be corrected because my promise to you and my promise to the divine is that I am openly a man and I am openly a soul and I am not here to transform to something else when I go. And that needs to be changed because I don't want any back-ended, and there is no need to be any back-ended presumption that you know when I die, like some caterpillar, I transform to something else. When I die, I die, and I am immortal, and I am like you. So I would say that what you've read is something that needs to be changed in light of that, and it just reflects that the, the, the journey is, I'm still coming to terms with it. So I would, I would like to see that reflected and you see that changed, yeah? Well, I, I really appreciate your integrity and because and, this is a process. Um, and I, and I, I believe that uh, your journey has been, your specific journey has been on this, this, I don't know whether you felt like you've been drawn this way, but I also felt drawn this way in and in 1983, I had an experience that I didn't know was so relevant till to now. But in 1983, I was in Thessalonica, Greece, 
which is my ancestry, but not knowing that my ancestors were from Thessaloniki. 